Hey everybody, it is Scott the Steenroller Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the one and only Steenroller free play of the day. As always, you're having fun digging what we're doing, maybe making a buck or two. We'd appreciate it if you give us that thumbs up. Hey, we'll give everybody a chance to do it here right at the beginning while we're thinking about it. Because uh, who spaces it out? Yeah, I do. So let's go ahead and do that. Here to hover over that thumb. Here we go. Three, two, one. Smash that sucker right there. Hammer it. Pound it. Beautifully done. So hit the subscribe button as well. And of course, stop by and check out winnersandwinders.com. Deep dives into every game every single day. Great resource. Always free. Make sure you check that out as well. And of course, we want to know what you're playing. Put those plays in the comment section. We've got some great handicappers give you a chance to show your stuff. Put them in there. I'll give you the shout out when you get them right. Get enough of them right. And you could wear the title of capper of the day. So without further ado, let's take a look and see how the action went for Saturday's games. That was the game that was when uh, everybody put their plays in. Oh, by the way, we had... We uh we had the Calgary Stampeders. You didn't think I was not going to talk about that, did you? And it was, it did not go well. I, I still don't know how Toronto won without uh, a seriously good quarterback, but they did. Calgary just didn't have it going. The def the defense I think it let us down more than anything else. So that one went, and uh, about like you would think one of my plays in Canadian football would go. So you know it'll. Uh, we may have another one that would mix in at some point. I, I like watching Canadian football. I enjoy the game. I think it's a lot of fun. And it's, it's you know, it's it's tricky. And I'm, st I'm still learning. It'll take me it'll take me some time, you know, two or three weeks to get rocking it. Usually, usually I figure out Canadian football and figure out the trends right about the time the NFL start. And then I forget, oh, Canadian who? So, yeah, anyway, drop, or, drop that Canadian football faster than a summer girlfriend. But in any case, we are taking a look at the major leagues tomorrow as the New York Yankees travel to Kauffman Stadium, take on the Kansas City Royals. Jamison Tyone goes for the Yanks against Carlos Hernandez for the Kansas City Royals. Take a look at the total of nine and a half. I am on the under. You know, these two pitchers have both pitched very well lately. Uh, Tyone has given up two or less in his last six. Nice thing about him, he goes deep in games. He's averaging uh, over six innings per start in those, in those half dozen games. And uh, New York, you've seen it. That offense has struggled all year. Now they did beat up on a couple of uh, uh, a, tip, a couple of the best of Baltimore pitchers uh, last week, but other than that, I think those are two outliers. Because in the other uh, in the other nine games of their last eleven, they've averaged just two point seven runs per game. Now for the Royals, uh, their offense was bad even before they traded Soler. Uh, ben and is going to be out for this one. That's not good. Now, they did break through for six runs yesterday against John Lester. Ooh, congratulations. That must make you feel so very tough. Um, and the uh, Cardinals, kind of the, the B squad relievers, but uh, they have tallied three or less runs in six of their last eight. And Hernandez, keep an eye on this kid. He's been figuring it out lately. He's got two great starts under his belt his last two times out. He has a legitimate four-pitch arsenal, guys. He's got a four-seamer and a sinker that uh, will hit 98. He's got a curve with a 38% punch-out rate, and he has a slider with a K rate of 46%. Those are nice numbers for your off-speed stuff, indeed. Now, obviously, I don't love either bullpen in this situation, especially the Royals, but they've been doing a little better lately. You know, well, the three runs to Cardinals notwithstanding yesterday, but I do think that they are able to hold it down enough early, give us a little late margin when we white-knuckle it through the last few innings. So if you're wondering why I'm not taking the first five, I think that's a legitimate play as well. I've just kind of overthought it the last couple of times. We took the Royals' first five on Saturday night, and of course, they, uh, they were... Uh, uh, Keller was, I was counting, counting Keller to be a little better, and he was not. Kim wasn't even great. Royals not nicked him for a couple. So, but it ended up going under for the game. So, trying not to overthink, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, get out over my skis. We're just going to play full game under. We're getting a nice number there at a nine and a, nine and a half. So, we'll play New York Yankees, Kansas City Royals under nine and a half. And at the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to. 
the window. All right, guys. Well, let's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a look and see how everybody did here today. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to T Train. I don't even know if he's going to be watching today. I know he's got a, he's got a big week coming up, a lot of tests and everything. And I know a lot of you guys chimed in. All the thoughts and prayers are headed your way, Tony. Um, so yeah, whatever, whatever pantheon you happen to follow, some prayers, good vibes, burn some sage, do a dance around the house, whatever you can do to send a little bit extra to T Train this week. That'd be great because we're all rooting for you, brother. Uh, by the way, Steve, the Godfather, go Don. Laying down some uh, NFL and college football picks there for week one. So go back on the Saturday video and check his stuff out as well. And a special shout out to Browns backer. Had his biggest win of his career so far. Turned a uh, $50 bet into a $338 payday. Nicely done, my friend. I believe he hit a, uh, what you hit? A three-teamer, right? Yep, hit a, a three-team money line parlay. So good job there, double B. All right, as far as Saturday's action go, Thomas Bowe goes one and one. He got juiced. By the way, somebody asked me about juice. Somebody answered the question correctly. But just for the record, when I say juice, and I don't know why I fall in love with that term. It just makes me laugh. But when you go, when you go even number one and one, two and two, whatever, most cases, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna pay the vig, the the vigorish, the juice, whatever, and that's where the term comes from. So doesn't always have to be even sometimes you can lay some serious wood and you can go three and two and get juiced. That happens as well. So, uh, anywho, uh, what just happened goes four and one plus 282. Our Rivera 911 goes four and one plus 300. Avery Smith goes one and oh plus 500. He had the Philadelphia Phillies. Sean O'Reilly one and oh plus 500. Dodgers on the running on the run line. Carrot goes three and two plus 29. God bless you, Carrot. Starting to put his totals back in there for those five games. Makes my life a lot easier. I don't have to go to Sofa Score and figure out uh, what the uh, I can. You know what? I can't even pull one of those teams. But I appreciate the effort, brother. Uh, Bazanster two goes two and one plus ninety. Jan Dudley first five in it once again one and zero oh, plus five hundred. Had the Colorado Rockies first five and Memon Thunderbird goes three and two plus fourteen. Almost got juiced, but uh, yeah, did okay. <clears throat> now, excuse me, guys. As far as the capper of the day, I have a bit of a dilemma because I had two really good performances. I had Brandon Zerfus going 1-0, plus 3525, hitting a four-team money line parlay. However, Donald Hatch, this is something that I have not seen much at all, you, and you don't see this much at all. Donald Hatch hit two... Three team parlays, uh, th three two, uh, three two, three two, uh, uh, three team. Excuse me, two three team money line parlays. So he goes two and zero oh, plus eight eighty three. If you're betting a hundred, so I have a hard time not recognizing the guy that hit not one but two parlays. Obviously, Brandon hitting the four teamer. That's impressive as well. What the hell? I'm going to do it. I'm going to make you guys co, co cappers of the day. I, I don't know how you can each hit parlays and not be the capper of the day. So Donald Hatch, 2 0, plus 883, hitting those two parlays. And Brandon Zerfus, 1 0, plus 35, 25, hitting the four team money line parlay. That's a big hit for both of you guys. Congratulations. I hope you played it for a ton, IRL. All right. So Brandon and Donald. You guys both are the cappers of the day. Well done, gentlemen. Well done to the rest of you. Appreciate uh, everybody hanging in there and uh, being cool with the day off. Going to put the pedal down. By the way, Garth Brooks, very good show. A lot of, lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was a blast. So uh, 70,000 of my closest friends there. We'll see how, we'll see how that goes. Fingers, fingers crossed on the pandemic and whatnot. But yeah, it was, it was a good time. So. Anywho, you guys have a great day. Good luck on all of your plays. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money when you head back to the window. Have a fantastic Monday, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, everybody.